So a while back on the channel, we took a look at the buildable Iron Man figure that was new for 2022. And in that video, I tried to defend it, saying that it was actually a quite nice figure to have, and it was worth the £35 that LEGO were asking for it. Nowadays, you can find it on sale, so you can get it for about £5 to £10 off of that price. And now with me encouraging people to buy this set, I thought we'd take a look at trying to fix the problems with it that I had in that video before. And the main issue I had was the chest piece just being the complete wrong shape, as it was a bit too thin, I think the arc reactor piece didn't look very good in the center there using the light brick, and the shoulder pads definitely needed to be attached to the arms and not the torso. But quite literally after I made that video, we decided to move house. So unfortunately, I just didn't have time to build something myself, which was really annoying because I really wanted to give this one a go. But by the time I got settled in in the new place, a bunch of other people had already taken upon the challenge of building a better Iron Man a few of which I've linked in the description below. There's this one by Chubbybox that really fixes a lot of the issues that I had with it, giving a really nice back plate to that face plate. Fixing the shoulder pads, but I unfortunately don't like the way he's done the chest plate, but definitely a massive improvement over the original build. But the one I wanted to show off to you guys is one by my buddy Ransom Fern. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it should do. I've already made a video on one of his other builds, which was the Iron Man Hulkbuster, which was one of the first fan mocks that I made ever. And like I say, have made a video on if you guys want to check that out at the end of this one. And I must say that I still have that Hulkbuster displayed in my LEGO collection today. It's currently just sat in a moving box that I need to try and dig out. But he decided to take on the challenge of rebuilding the Iron Man into something that was going to be much better than that original build. And this is what he came up with. And as you can see, it's a very different model. It's not technically a buildable, full-on figure anymore, it's more of a bust. But if I'm honest, I'm perfectly happy with that, considering the way that it looks. He managed to capture the look of the Mark 43 much better than LEGO did, with the gold accents being in the correct locations this time, and the overall shape being much more reminiscent of an Iron Man suit. And I think the best way to show this off is from a side profile. You can just see from the side profile that the model is much thicker than something like LEGO's, as something I don't think LEGO quite realizes is that when you're making a human in a suit, the suit has to be thicker than the human. But it's something that's really well executed on this model. But before I talk about more of the details of this model, I just want to talk a little bit about the base. As we know, the original Iron Man suit came with a plaque, and unfortunately in the set it does seem a bit random to include a plaque considering it's just off to the side. However, this model then turns that plaque into a nice display stand for the model, which is actually integrated into the model as a structural element, keeping the whole base of the model together so you can pop this Iron Man on top. Speaking of the Iron Man, let's get into the model itself. I've already mentioned the shaping and how I think this Iron Man armor is a much better shape than the previous one, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of a closer look to how this is even built. Starting with the head, I think the head is a very reminiscent build of the original model, although there has been a few design tweaks just to attach it to the model, and now that this model is so big, it really does help sell that whole molded faceplate thing that I had a problem with in the previous model. And getting into the torso area where I feel there is the most to talk about, it's interesting because the torso is actually built upside down. As you can see here, if I pull off the head, these collarbones are attached to a upside down structure on the inside using snot techniques to basically flip the pieces round into looking like they are built like a conventional Lego set, but in reality are built in the most complicated way, but makes the model look incredibly nice. Like I say, the shaping on this model is incredible. Everything just seems to fit together like a really complicated Lego puzzle. And you can see here, if I pull off the arm, a bit of a better look on how the torso is constructed. Those intricate details just trying to fill out the model and make it look as thick as it needs to be, and using things like the mixel joints from originally the legs and the arms and the hands to create angles that you normally wouldn't see on a Lego buildable figure, which really allows you to get that organic shape that the Iron Man suit has. But I will say this model does have a few delicate areas, under the torso definitely being one of them. There is a slope piece right here which tends to fall off quite a bit, but if I'm honest, what I will say is that it tends to fall off mainly when you're moving the model, as it is only a one stud connection. However, if it's attached to the model and you're not physically touching it, it will definitely survive a shake test. There is also a section here which is a 2x2 two two with a mixel joint attachment on it, and although not a delicate piece, something I don't know if you'd technically count as a legal technique with this red armor 
attached to the actual extending part of the mixel joint. But being someone who's usually very turned off about using illegal LEGO techniques in their mocks, this is still something I would probably do if I was building this myself even if it is in that grey area of LEGO legality. But that's it for the problems I have with the torso and really the entire model. Moving on to the arm section, you can see that I've changed mine just a little bit, once again keeping the sticker on, as well as adding another one of these red angle pieces to just break up that ugly grey colour. And another thing I like about the model is they put the shoulder pad on the edge of the arm and then created more shoulder pad as you go up the arm onto the shoulder, using one of those original abdomen pieces and these nice metallic gold pieces, which again is accurate to the shoulder pad of the Mark 43. And this arm just simply plugs into the side of the body using this extended mixel joint and does give you some posability when it's on the model, but if I'm honest, it's just easier to just leave it as is, as it's a bust model. And there is no real need to pose this model in any way apart from really moving the head. But turning the model round, you can see the back is just as filled out as the front, unlike the Lego model. You have the illusion of the back panels. Unfortunately, they do not open up like the Lego models did. But like I say, it's not something that's necessary on a model that's this small and again is going to be displayed rather than played with. But one of the most genius features of this model and a massive issue that I complain about with most sets that include a light brick is that somehow he has kept the light brick on the inside of this and has made it toggleable. Meaning you can turn this light brick on and off as you please by lifting up this back section on the back here. And although yes, it's the wrong color, we can't really do anything about that. The fact that this is even an option to have on display when showing off to people or on your desk is a great option to have in my opinion. But that's forgetting the one really important thing that I think makes this model really special. And that's the fact that it's made from just you using the parts from that original Iron Man model. And if I'm honest, that's what tipped me over the edge in building this one over, say, maybe other models that exist out on Rebrickable, or even trying to design my own model myself. Ransom Fern has managed to do what I believe LEGO couldn't do, and build an Iron Man buildable figure that looks genuinely like the source material. I think he's done a fantastic job, and yes, you do get some spare pieces out of this. To give you guys a little bit of a gauge of how many spare pieces, as you do get a fair few spare pieces left over from this model, here is my box of spares, and yes, you could see this as a waste, but if I'm honest, this model just makes this so much nicer. And if you're not planning on playing with the original Iron Man figure, I definitely think this is one to build. You can purchase his instructions over on his Rebrickable page, which will be linked in the description below. And Ransom Fern, if you are watching this video, which I'm sure you'll stumble across it at some point, I tip my hat off to you for once again building another fantastic Iron Man model that's part of my collection. If you guys want to see the original Iron Man review, you can check that out by clicking the screen now. And while you're down in the description looking at Ransom Fern's model, maybe head over to his video on this model and give it a like from us. Just remember to tell him that I sent you.